Hello viewers, welcome to my YouTube channel Curiosity Box and this video is another autism education video and this video is part of the Senses mini series and this specific episode is all about my hearing, my auditory processing. So to start with my made my sensitivity are to I'm most sensitive to motorbikes, big massive lorries, fireworks, dogs barking, the Hoover. Now some days the Hoover is can be endurable but if I'm really tired it's really horrible and really hard work. So, those are my main sensitivities. I'm also sensitive to having the tally up too loud because my mum and dad, um, they tend to turn the tally up too loud so I'd be quite sensitive to that. Now, ironically, even though I'm sensitive to the volume of the tally, I still have subtitles on TV because even though the volume's high, it doesn't necessarily mean that I can interpret the speech. Because if I have the subtitles on, it sort of grabs the words out of the people's mouths and anchors them down for me. Because otherwise, if the words sort of distort on the way to my ear, so which can have hilarious consequences actually. Now if I'm not paying attention to the television then it um, distortions um, um, larger than if I am paying attention to a screen without subtitles and so there can be like very surreal sentences and like a lot of um, swearing before the watershed which isn't swearing at all it's just what I'm interpreting it so it can be very funny at times so so even though my I get sensitive to loud noises it's not always easy to decipher speech accurately so that's why I like to look at mouths that's why this make eye contact, make eye contact that neurotypicals um, plead with me to do or plead with autistic people to do, that wouldn't help me because it wouldn't help me take in what you were saying. So if, and what, um, I also find it easier to take in something if somebody's saying, now, if my mum says, now listen to what I'm saying, so I'll go like this on my sofa like, because it's there's no distractions easier to concentrate and hear what somebody says if I look away so if I look away and be still and put my stuff down I am actually listening to you so now when I am um, actually I will do a little demonstration I have to go and find a couple of things but I'll get to that in a minute so what I do like is um, toys that make sounds because then the sound is expected and under my control then so I love toys that make sounds and then I love ASMR videos because they're and especially ones that use the microphones where they touch their ears, the fake ears. So I, I love those because they give me really, really strong tingles down my back. The best is Heather Feather. The tingles I get from Heather Feather are so strong down my spine. And, but, and sometimes the, the response could be so strong that my legs wake up and really hyper my legs are we get really hyper and it's hard to go to sleep because my legs are too hyper but sometimes it is very easy to go to sleep because it's very relaxing so um i 
have ear defenders, big ones. This is a thing. I need some props. I forgot my props. I'll be back in a tick. So stay tuned. So these are really good for when the hoover's on and they're also good for if you go to a family party with loud music and you put these on you can actually hear the people on your specific table's conversation because when I'm out in public like Spinal Tap everything is turned up to 11 like each type of sound isn't on its own volume setting everything is turned up to 11 and it's all at the same time turned up to 11 so it can be really hard to it just makes tummy feel sick and then they sort of zone out I can when I so I tend to that can sort of zone me out but like sometimes when I'm concentrating on doing something I really enjoy mm. I can like zoom out and it lessens the import that is coming in so people people saying stuff aren't always aren't getting my attention which is how my hearing works it's just really hard to explain because I thought of this doing this topic earlier but I it really hard as you can tell my words are starting to get really difficult which happens it, I'm better with um, doing my little comedy skits my words tend to come out better when I'm doing comedy skits when I'm doing educational stuff it's pretty difficult so what my invention is if I was to go on Dragon's Den, I would want ear defenders that work like these, that do filter out noises, and but this compartment would need to be a lot flatter, say, flat, because it's they stick out loads, and obviously, because they stick out loads, it's not the most stylish look because the only ones I could find that for adult ears are black and red. I could find bright colours for kids ones but for adult ones black and red and they're not good. So I'd make see and um, see if this science guys can invent ear defenders that actually do filter out the noise but the the these bits aren't so chunky or if they are maybe they could produce some that have got cool designs on because my other idea was that you could get interchangeable um, attachments or inserts with pictures of your favourite topics so they'd work double duty then they'd defend your ears and also be a conversation starter so that was my um, invention idea and I wish somebody would produce them because the well the other option for people is to get the the earphones the headphones that are music headphones but that but I don't want really I don't really want music headphones that have music on them I prefer the technology of the ear defenders because it crystallizes I guess conversations and separates them out because instead of uh, being in a room that's just one big um, sound volume up to 11 conversation it actually for me these crystallize and filter out the conversations into different clumps which makes it a lot easier but obviously they're not very discreet but I've recently got confident and my mum has got less embarrassed about me wearing these um, around the family. So when the Neville visits the, my auntie's dog, 
I put I could put these on. So and and obviously conventions are great but a lot they not subtitled when they they do the speeches on conventions and they have the star on the main stage and you say it's not it can be tricky sometimes because obviously that's not subtitled and you can't see can't always see their mouth because they're far away but it is on the big screen but it would be but which is why I like the smaller conventions and that the more intimate conventions like we, there was Torchwood one and it wasn't intentionally small convention it's just not as many people um, bought tickets for it so it was smaller and I could actually chat to people and there was like meet and greets round tables that's a lot easier at conventions because then I can hear things better then and so yeah that's an, something that I really struggled with at school was teachers who are, are very shouty and that was what a lot of what I as well as the bullying which was shite a lot of what I was scared of at school was the prepen for the was the the um unexpected shouting you never knew when that specific teacher was gonna lose his temper and shout and it was really painful so I was always on edge at school and uh, one of the th that's just why I don't know if I did this deliberately or if I was totally correct anyway because I was meant to go up to the top class at primary school and people were saying that oh you're meant to be in the top class and people were saying I was meant to be in the top class but I didn't uh, but I, I really don't want to go into that teacher's class because they had a reputation for being loud and shouting so I sort of skipped here <laughs> unintentionally I don't think I did it. I don't think I did skip a year because I just didn't go into the loud teacher's class. And then we had a, a brand new teacher who was nice and who didn't shout. So I happily went into the top class then because the teacher didn't shout. And then when I was at high school and we did maths, I had to go down a set and they read out the list of who's going to be in each class and I burst into tears not because I'd gone down a class because like I was crap at maths or something but because I knew that teacher had a reputation for shouting and then and I, that's what upset me so much and then the there was a, another teacher who had a reputation for shouting and I ended up and they was one year they was like our form teacher and was like real incredibly upset because they had a reputation for shouting so the teachers i was scared of the most were those who might make an unexpected loud noise so that put me on edge for a lot of school so yeah it was hard work so teachers please don't shout unexpectedly at school because it's even if you're sh focusing your the shouting at one specific kid it can be incredibly painful for somebody with sensitive ears and make their school life a misery even if they're not getting in trouble for anything it can be really difficult to be at school so that was one of my things which I found really difficult um what else can I so yeah these are the well I've got these I love these cell machines because I although these are I wish these cell machines had volume settings because these this one and this one they're just a tiny bit too loud so I'd still get a bit scared but I know 
what song to expect and with uh, Teddy's that talk and like Chewbacca that talks and like Doctor Who things that talk even though the, they're slightly too loud I like I'm controlling the noise so I do have like a bit of a fascination with the toys that make sounds uh, and YouTube, my YouTube viewing is affected by my hearing too and my um, response to different accents and levels of volume and sounds people make I tend to, um, the people I tend to follow on YouTube are certain types of voices that I find really nice and I would like, can I would there are some um, YouTube accounts that do great videos and, and what they're doing is fab. It's just the voice is what prevents me from wanting to view more of their videos or subscribe is the, that particular frequency or volume or sound that they make is unpleasant. So I, I won't follow them because of the sound that they make. So I tend to follow um, softer voices and like softer voices and voices that tend to sort of click a bit. I so that's what I tend to do on YouTube. So my hearing affects pretty much everything, I guess. Yeah, but I do like really loud discos at conventions that's one of the things I do enjoy is because I I do because it gets so loud that it's sort of like there's like that ring tone like certain ring tone and that I come to adjust and accept when I'm dancing because I'm concentrating on doing my moves because I love disco dancing I love it <laughs> so I went to the Buffy convention and I was the last on the dance floor for every disco and then one of the um, helpers out at the conventions that was really impressed with me because I was the last on the dance floor at each night of the disco at the Buffy convention and it was so much fun so I love dancing to discos so when you're autistic there are sounds that you're really scared of and sound and also sounds that you, you grab and want so so the unexpectedness of noise is what affects me and I guess that's why I like doing my videos in the middle of the night because all the sound input is a lot less at the middle of the night and it's more hearing my own thoughts my own it's more of my own perceptions and thoughts that are coming through without any extraneous noise that you get in the daytime so I think maybe that's why I'm a night owl because I can think clearly at night whereas in the daytime everything's inputting so yeah So that's the video about my hearing and auditory processing. With all these videos, there's probably going to be more little bits that I want to say. So I'll have to think about how I'm going to collect all those extra thoughts that I have. So I hope you have enjoyed this video and I hope it has been very educative. And thank you for watching.